This is our second type of titration. It's a weak acid, strong base. Many of these calculations will probably look similar to the strong acid, strong base, although there are, will be some differences. Our weak acid that we're gonna be uh, working with is actually formic acid. And formic acid has a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus four. So it is definitely weak acid. And this time we're gonna use sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. And it's helpful to be able to recognize strong acids, weak acids. And of course, uh, weak acids um, are any acid that doesn't have, isn't one of their seven strong acids that we've memorized. And just to revisit the seven strong acids, we've got uh, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, uh, nitric, sulfuric, uh, chloric, and perchloric. So those are the seven strong acids. Apart from that, there are two ways to recognize uh, acids in general. And acids in general have either the COOH group somewhere in their formula, or they have H's in the front. So examples would be H2S, uh, H2CO3. Those are two weak acids that don't follow the COOH uh, grouping, but uh, that's, that's how you tell acids, right? So you have H's in the front, and then you've got weak acids and strong acids. All seven strong acids have H's in the front, or two H's in the case of sulfuric acid, or they have COOH in the back. All right, so our overall reaction for this process is going to be given right here. We've got uh, the formic acid plus sodium hydroxide goes to H2O plus sodium formate with that formula right there. And uh, weak acids do not break up more than one or two, more than 5%. So we're going to have uh, a whole molecule here uh, we don't break that up into two different ions. We do break up the sodium hydroxide because it's a strong base, and we will find that the sodium ion is a spectator ion. We then add hydroxide, and we get water and formate. We don't have to know the name, but there it is. And we do have to know that it's a minus. And our next question is going to be for this reaction, does it go all the way? Uh, we have a weak acid and a strong base. And what you will notice about this is that for this particular reaction, uh, we've got, um, uh, let's change colors here, try to. We've got water in it. And water will always help you locate what kind of reaction it is. So, and we've got next to it, we've got a weak base. And in fact, we've got a conjugate weak base for our formic acid. So if we were to turn this reaction around, it would be formate plus water goes to, let's double check, base, so move our H plus, this is going to be formic acid plus hydroxide. And you remember that water is the other reactant in both Ka reactions and Kb reactions. This is a Kb reaction for formate ion. So if we want to know if this reaction goes to completion or not, we need to know what the Kb value is for formate. And then the reaction, the net ionic equation for the reaction that we're doing is going to be 1 over Kb equals our Kc. So if you remember back how to do Kb, so Kb for formate, a conjugate weak base, is equal to 1 over, oh, sorry, Kw over Ka for formic acid. And that's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 over 
Oh, it's right up there. It was right up there. There it is. 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. And I know this is a, a, a bit of work here. So one exponent 14 minus divided by 1.8 exponent four minus, and I get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. That's gonna be our KB value for formate. It's a weak base because its KB value is between 0.1 and 10 to the minus 14. Good. And then we said uh, K, let's do this part now. So KC equals one over that number. So I'm gonna hit my one over number and I get 1.8 times 10 to the plus 10. So this reaction has a K value of 1.8 times 10 to the plus 10, which means this reaction goes to completion. And in general, I know it's a bit of work here, but in general, the general thing we're gonna get out of this is that weak acid, strong base titrations do go to completion they were very large KC values. And anything that has at least one thing strong, whether it's a strong acid or a strong base, will go to completion. And we get a way to prove it, which is always nice. All right, so now we know this reaction goes to completion. When we have reactions that go to completion, we set up mole ice tables. So let's set up a mole ice table now. And my mole ice table is going to be set up around my net ionic equation. I can, you, you can put either arrow here, but this reaction does actually go to completion. And mole ice table. And let's see, so now we have 25 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar uh, formate, HCOOH. So that's going to be 0 0.025, converting my milliliters into liters, times 0 0.1. I get 0 0.00250 moles there. And for my, I get point oh. Let's do um, uh, 10 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide. And I get, so that's going to be 0 0.00100 moles of hydroxide. I start with no water and I do start with no formate. For this. This is a mole ice table. You find your limiting reactant, which is hydroxide. Subtract it off. The changes are always related like this. So now we know that we have plus 0 0.001 on the other side. And we end up with zero hydroxide. And we sometimes put approximately zero there because in water, there's always a little bit of hydroxide. We get 0 0.00150 moles of formic acid and 0 0.00100 moles of um, weak base. Wait a minute, we have a weak acid. We have a conjugate weak base. We have just made a buffer. And if we have a buffer, we can do the henderson hassel bouch equation. Like so. The pKa, and let's see, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, let's see, so, ah, there we go. Uh, plugging in our numbers, pKa, remember we've got our Ka value up here. It is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4, so pKa, 1.8, 
exponent four minus log, I get 3.74 plus log. And see, now I'm using just CWB over WA because those units can be either moles or molarity, doesn't matter, as long as the units are the same. And since I have moles this time, I will put my moles in and then calculate that. So 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.0015 and then log it. I get minus 0 0.18. And my pH for this is going to be 3.74, 3.56. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of space there, but 3.56, this is a buffer. And weak acid, weak ba a strong base titrations will make buffers, and there will be a buffer region for this. All right, so let's go to the next one. What is the pH when 20, 30, 40, and 70 milliliters? Um, let's see what we're gonna do for this. We have more space on the next page. Let's do uh, 40 milliliters. Do we want to do 40? Is 40 the right number? 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Yep. 40 milliliters. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, sorry, one more change. NaOH have been added to 40 milliliters of twenty-five point one, right. Okay. To so 40 milliliters of point one. So this is a useful point. Um we're going to have 40 of the same concentration. So we're going to end up with the same number of moles, and this is going to be an equivalence point calculation. And I should have just written EP here, but P. Um, so here's how we're going to do this. So uh, 40 and 0.1. So that's going to be 0 0.00400 moles of hydroxide, 0 0.00400 moles of formic acid. So the moles are the same. This reaction, same reaction we just did before, this reaction will go to completion. We can set up a mole ice table. That's going to be the same mole ice table we did last time. And we'll see what we've got. Okay. So plug in your numbers. Now, this is the equivalence point. That means we have equivalent, or in this case, equal moles of our weak acid and our strong base. Subtract them both off. And what have we made? Well, all we have left is conjugate weak base, but we have no weak acid. So this is not a buffer. And what you'll see, because you'll get a lot of these uh, uh, thrown at you to solve, is that you always do a mole. Any titration calculation ends up being a mole ice table first to see what you have left. And then you have to evaluate um, and see what to do with what you have left. We have a weak base. That's all we have. So only weak base and water. 
And we've done actually this calculation before. Um, so what you do is if you have a weak base in water, the only reaction you can do is a KB reaction for whatever your weak base is. And that's how we're going to determine pH. So we're going to write now, so a KB reaction is going to be a molarity ice table, HCOO minus plus H2O. KB reactions, and I think, did we do the KB for this? Let's go back. KB was 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Good, we've got our KB value. Phew, don't have to do that again. Um, this is going to be, it's going to base, so it's going to make hydroxide. And I'm sort of out of space here. Well, we need that space, so. We'll put that back in a minute. Uh, H, C, O, O, H. KB equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. There we go. Got excited for writing my KB. It's a molarity mice table, not a molice table. Oh, this is molarity. We have moles right here. So we need to know its molarity. Our total volume is uh, 40 plus 40 or 80. That's a zero. 0. 0. 0.080 liters. So divide those two. And we get 0. 0.004 divided by 0. 0.08. We get 0 0.0500 molarity. We have approximately no hydroxide. We have no uh, formic acid. You can see we've got none up here. Wait a minute. We This reaction is the reverse of this reaction up here. Anyway, we'll, we'll think about that. It's like the reaction, okay, let's talk about it now. It's like the top reaction went to completion, and now we're actually reversing it and allowing it to go back a little bit. Anyway, just something to think about. All right, so now we have a molarity ice table again. That's going to be in terms of X's. KB equals 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11 going to equal x squared over 0 0.0500 minus x. And if you solve for x, and we've done this a number of times before, uh, times 0.05 equals square root. I get 1.7 times 10 to the minus 6th, which is our concentration of hydroxide, and then I can find pOH, 1.7, x minus 6 minus, log it, I get 5.77, and our pH is 14 minus that, and I get 8.23. And what does that say? That tells me that at the equivalence point, my pH will be 8.23, not 7. So when you have a weak acid, strong base titration, the equivalence point will be at a pH above 7. And that's going to be enough. So uh, I'm going to leave this space here. You can do some more of these calculations. And in fact, what I'd like you to do is a pH calculation on the next page for 50 milliliters using this exact same system. So it's going to be uh, 50 milliliters of 0 0.100 more sodium hydroxide, 40 milliliters of 0 0.100 more formic acid.
and tell me what the pH will be. But for now, let's move on and do a pH titration plot for a weak acid strong base titration. We've got, uh, and in general, let's see. So, um, and this will be, did I do it right? 25, well, this is gonna be a little different. So this is gonna be the titration uh, in general. So let's see, it's gonna be the same titration for these calculations right here. And if we do that, we know that at 40 milliliters, which is our equivalence point, we're gonna have a pH of 8.23 right there. And what's different, um, so at 20 milliliters, this is the midpoint of the titration because it's halfway between zero and 40. At 20 degrees, or sorry, 20 degrees, 20 milliliters, it turns out that the buffer we will make will have pH equals pKa because at that point we will have exactly equal amounts of our conjugate weak base and our weak acid. And that is, uh, for this system, 3.74, so right about there. And it tends to go like this. So it tends to start relatively low. There's a little hump. Then there's a steady increase. And then it gets steeper, not as steep as for strong acid, strong base. And then on the other side, what you'll see is past the equivalence point, it looks very similar to a strong acid, strong base titration. very similar to strong acid, strong base. And you'll see why when you do this calculation. Okay, so really all you need in general, well, it helps if you have the initial point too. You have pH equals pKa at the midpoint. And you have to do the calculation at the equivalence point to figure out what the pH is. And beyond it, it sort of comes up here and flattens out. Um, and you'll notice that it does look different before the equivalence point versus after the equivalence point for this, which is different. And if I were to sketch on this one in black, the strong acid, strong base, it would look something like this for a similar concentration. Starts lower picks up very similar, so, or very slowly, gets very steep, and then is very similar past the equivalence point. So that's the difference between a strong acid and a strong base. Of course, a strong acid will always have a lower pH um, because it makes, uh, so uh, before EP, because it's more ionized. There's no buffer as well. 